Good morning, good morning, good morning, good evening. Uh, I want to talk to you all by the grace of God. And I want us to talk about some profound things that God may give us um, grace and mercy and favor. So I pray by the Spirit of God, wherever you are, share this as many times as you can. As many times as you can. Um, it is the will of God for us to do that so that others can also be blessed. You know, um, I was watching a video, right? And I was teaching in the video and um, some guys made a video and they were talking about, look at this pastor asking people to like the video or else he's going to stop teaching. Jesus wouldn't do that. I'm like, uh, you don't know if Jesus wouldn't do that because you're trying to work the algorithm for more people to see the video, right? Yes. So if I don't catch you up enough or get a hold of you enough for more people to watch something, then we wasted time. Because the point and the convenience of social media is so that a lot of people can see it, right? Yes. That's the point of it. So you don't go on social media and whoever listens, that's, that's, that's not being a fisher of men. Yes. To be a fisher of men, you need to be strategic. Get as many people to see the video. Yes. I believe that's wisdom. Maybe it's just me, but... You know, we do this so that more people can watch and people can be blessed. It's the point of it. If people don't like a video, then they don't push it. If people like it, then more people will see it. Yes, I think that's that's the way this thing works. But what do I know? Anyway, share this as many times as possible. I want to talk to you about something very special. I want to talk to you about the curse of favor. I know that sounds weird. But listen to this, the curse of favor. The curse of favor. And you'll understand the curse aspect of it. Now, somebody says, I get a uh, friend request from different fake pages with your name every day. I'm sorry about that. That's why you have to be vigilant, right? So hear me, children of God. I want to talk to you about the curse of favor. Jaquan, my guy, God bless you, big man. Big ticket. Now, I want to talk to you about this, and I think this will bless you. Why do many Christians suffer and struggle? Yet people are faithful in their giving. People are faithful in their prayer. Why are people struggling? Yet, they are believers in the Lord Jesus, the Lord Jesus is with them. They feel the Holy Spirit. They speak in tongues. They do all the right things that you can do spiritually. Now, I am not using my words loosely. I know exactly what I'm saying. And I'm saying it again, spiritually. Now, there is an issue that many have failed to observe. And I know many of you are watching, you feel like you're on that boat. Like, man, I do everything right. I pray, I give, I'm faithful with my tithes, I'm faithful with my offerings, I fast, I do all things right. But I'm still struggling. I, do, I can't catch a break. Now, I always say this and I say this probably a lot, times, a lot of uh, times than I should. But I say it many times anyway because the problem with the believer is we perish because of lack of knowledge the issue of believers is we operate not understanding the protocols of heaven how does god bring a blessing to a person how does God open doors for a person? How does God increase a person? How does God uh, 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 protect a person? How does God do this thing we call blessing on earth? Mm. Remember, if you don't know how something works, it doesn't matter how faithful you are, you will still suffer. Yes, sir. Ignorance is never... Ignorance is never a defense when it comes to spiritual matters. Ignorance is never, ever, ever, ever a defense. 
So as a believer in the Lord Jesus, it is your mandate to actually understand these things. Because if you don't understand it and you suffer, it's not God's fault. It's your fault. Yes, sir. They are protocols of the divine. Now, I want you to hear what the Bible will say about the Lord Jesus. I want you to hear what the Bible will say about the Lord Jesus. And why is God emphasizing something that your pastor, your bishop, your prophet, your evangelist is ignorant of? <laughs> Them themselves, they don't live by it. So obviously something that somebody doesn't live by can't even give you themselves. Yes, sir. I want you to hear this. Can you read it for me? Luke chapter 2, verse 52. Luke 2, 52. I want you to hear this. Uh -huh. Read it. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature uh -huh. and in favor with God and men. One more time. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature. Notice, wisdom and stature. Wisdom was of the soul. Stature was his physical appearance. Wow. Uh -huh. And in favor with God and men. And then it shows you two areas of life that Jesus grew. He did not just grow internally. Yes, sir. It shows he grew in wisdom and stature. It shows that his inner man had, was growing and his physical appearance was growing. Yes, then he goes out and he tells you that he grew with favor with God. Yes, sir. And also with man. Yes, it means when Jesus was born, he was not favored. Mm. Because if I have to grow in something, it means it wasn't automatic. Yes, sir. That's deep. That's deep. Jesus grew in favor. So favor is not something you just declare, I receive favor. I receive favor. And favor comes. It's a lie. You grow in favor. Amen. It is a growth thing. If Jesus had to grow in favor, the son of God, Mm. That he had to grow in favor to the point his father had to confess yes. when he's 30 years old. This is my beloved son. When he was born, he never said he's my beloved son. He just said, for God loved the world. <laughs> You're teaching this. Then when he matures, God says, ah, I love him. Wow. I don't just love the world, but now I love him also. Mm. Two different aspects. Wow. But here's the tricky thing now. Jesus grew in favor with God and with man. Somebody says, these people are attacking me when I defend you about the third eye. Before you, I always thought that it, it was witchcraft. And whoever tries to defend it or apply it Christianity. First of all, guys, show me one teaching I taught about third eye. Anyway, we leave it to God. Let's just, let's just leave it like that. Thank you for standing with me. May God bless you. But, but hear me and hear me well. Hear me and hear me well. Jesus grew in favor with God and with man. The Bible is showing you strategically that Jesus did not just please God. Mm -hmm. He also pleased man. So why do your pastor tell you, I don't care about how man feels. I'm not here to please man. I'm only here to please God. Have you ever noticed people who talk like that actually struggle? They're anointed by God. Their calling is genuine by God. But they don't prosper. And maybe they are comfortable with the little measure of prosperity they have. But what God has for them is so much greater. Yes, sir. So if God is showing you that it is necessary to grow in favor with man. But your church is telling you, you don't need to please man, just please God. They have it wrong. Because you cannot grow in favor with man unless you know how to touch man's heart. Because how you touch man's heart is very different than how you touch God's heart. Wow. Wow. I 
I don't know if somebody got that. You don't need to please anyone. I'm not here to please any person. You're deceiving yourself. That is the biggest deception ever. This is why Christians don't have a sweet spirit. Yes, sir. There's something in the scriptures called a sweet spirit. One day we'll yes, talk sir. about it. A pleasant spirit. Yes, sir. So it is very crazy when somebody is telling you, ah, you don't need to please man, <laughs> just please God. No, 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 no. You see, Jesus said, give honor where it is due. Yes. Give Caesar what is Caesar's and give God what is God. So as a child of God, you need to understand, I need to give God what is God's, but I also need to give man what is man's. Yes, sir. Anyone that does not know how to, the Bible says, he who wins a friend is wise. Mm. More pastors are making more enemies in the name of God. Yet God wants you to have favor with men. <laughs> yeah, too deep. Okay, let me show you something. Read, read the, the scripture. What was it? Um, um, favor with... with uh, um, yeah, read it for me. Listen to this. I want you to hear this. Luke chapter 6 verse 38. Uh, Luke 6 38. Listen to this. Give. And it shall be given unto you. Give, and you, you see, <laughs> pastors always preach this part. Give, and it will be given unto you. Pressed down, shaken together, running over. And they stop there. But they don't tell you this last part. Listen to this last part. Shall men give into your bosom? Who will give to you? Men. Not God, men. Mm. Give, and it shall be given to you. Pressed down, shaken together, running over. Shall men give unto you? Yes, sir. Wait, wait, wait. Not God, men. Yes, sir. So if I have favor with God, God will send a word into people's hearts mm. to favor you, to bless you. Mm. But if that man, you offended that man, that man is not obligated to favor you because your favor with God is different with your favor with man. Uh, too deep. <laughs> That's too deep. Thank you. Uh, I don't know if somebody heard that. Thank you, sir. Your favor with God is very different from your favor with men. So just because I have pleased God, it doesn't mean I have pleased man. I don't know if somebody can hear me. So if God is saying men will give unto you, he didn't say I will come and give to you. Mm. He's saying men shall give unto you. I will make men give unto you. But you, you have offended everyone around you. So even if God wants to bless you, who will he use to bless you? Because dollars don't come from heaven. Yes, sir. They come from your national bank. Yes, sir. And the money is with people. Yes, sir. Not with God. Yes, so in order for God to bless you, he has to move people to bless you. Mm. The wealth of the wicked is stored up for the righteous. But the church is ruining relationships with everyone. I'm just going to tell you how it is. And whatever you do, I'm here to please God. I'm just going to speak. No, 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 no. Do you realize, I always tell people this, and people are never observant. If you look at how the Lord Jesus dealt with people, even the Pharisees who are looking for his downfall, the Lord Jesus always answered them in a way that only the Pharisees know that Jesus is correcting them. Mm. But the crowd never knew what Jesus was saying to them. Yes, sir. They will ask him questions to trap him. But Jesus will respond to them in a way that they will remove themselves. But he won't make the crowds go against them. Yes, sir. Because Jesus still needed the priests to carry out what they needed to do. Because you have to remember, without the priests, there are things Jesus as a prophet he cannot do. Only priests can do. Yes, sir. So when Jesus would heal some people, what would he say? Go and give an offering according to the law of Moses and show yourself to the high priest. Because he will approve your miracle. Yes, sir. Jesus himself, he would learn from the Pharisees. He used to go to the temple and ask questions. Mm. It means he wasn't all-knowing. Mm. He grew in wisdom, meaning it increased. Yes, that even when he was 14, was it 14 that his parents were looking for him or 12? Yes, they, were, they were looking for him. Yes. And they found him sitting with elders, mm. asking questions that the parents said, Who is this young boy asking? Mm. He didn't say, um, Who is this young boy teaching? Mm. A young boy asking questions. I personally don't care how anointed a child is. A child should not preach. A child should be asking questions. Wow. There's an age a child should get to that you release them. That's why I keep Andrew. Mm. Andrew, is, Andrew can prophesy. 
Andrew can hear, can hear from God. He can do the work. But you know what? I keep Andrew from preaching. Have you noticed that? Yes, yes, I don't put him out there. Once in a while, he will go with me like he will travel with me. We will go to Jamaica. I will give him an opportunity to say one or two things. And through the prophecy, I will teach him. Not in our home church. I will teach him. Guide him through the process. When I was doing deliverance in... in uh, in Jamaica. I gave him the mic. He was commanding demons and they were coming yes, out of sir. people. Yes, but I am still teaching him because he's still in the realm of questions. He hasn't matured. Wow. So if you put a child out there to try and to teach things when they are not of age, you just ruin them. You can't teach without experience. What are you doing? Do you understand what I'm saying? It becomes yes, a problem. It's not wisdom. Yes, sir. It is not wisdom at all. So you think about it. You are busy offending people in the name of God. <laughs> but when God wants to bless you, he needs those people to bless you. Mm. An example is this. Saul has encountered the Lord Jesus. Yes, sir. Saul has encountered the Lord Jesus. But he's blind. God wants to heal him, but he needs a man to heal him. Mm -hmm. So God goes to a devout man called Ananias. And he says, uh, I want you to go to this street. Mm. Go to this address. So when we prophesy addresses, they say it's not... Uh, 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 what is it called? Uh, um, they say... Uh, uh, it's it's not biblical. <laughs> the guy is given an address. He goes, uh, he's told, go to this place, you'll find a man called Saul. I want you to pray for him and restore his sight. Mm -hmm. Ah, the guy asked God, he said, Lord, isn't this the guy that is killing us? Mm -hmm. <laughs> then God had to convince him and say, no, 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 no. Don't worry, he will suffer many things for my sake. Yes. He will be very useful for my yes, kingdom. Sir. Please go. Yes, sir. So God had to move his heart. Notice he could have refused. True. Remember, God is telling Moses, go. Yes, Moses sir. said, I'm not going without error. <laughs> <laughs> so a man can refuse and they are not obligated. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because in the realm of men, God needs men. Many of you are saying, I cancel generational curse. I cancel limitation. I cancel this. You're not canceling anything. You're not fighting any demon. You are under a curse because you don't please the people around you. And to please people doesn't mean engage in sin. To please people means live peaceably with people. Make an impact on people. Most of these men and women of God that claim to be speaking the truth, I promise you, if the Lord was ever to call them home, nobody will mourn them. They never made any impact on people's hearts. Yes, you see, the Bible says that Jesus was loved by all. And we can see it. They say that he's a friend of publicans and he's a friend of drunkards, he's a, of wine, wine bibles and all these things. Because they did not understand how are these people liking him? Because the high priests were not loved by these people. Mm. So Jesus is loved by everyone. Why? A tax collector called Zacchaeus is, is, is stealing from everybody. Mm -hmm. Jesus is walking and the guy climbs a tree to see Jesus. Jesus calls him by his name. He says, Zacchaeus, come down. I'm coming to eat at your house. He said, me. He said, yes, yeah, yeah, you, come down. I'm coming to eat at your house. Jesus goes to eat with him. Jesus doesn't pray for him. Jesus doesn't cast out a demon out of him. Jesus just says, I'm coming to eat at your house. And as he's eating with Jesus, the man begins to repent. Says, ah, I am going to give everybody double that I stole from. That Jesus says, surely salvation has come into this house. Yet yeah, Jesus didn't, didn't, didn't rebuke him, you are a thief. Jesus knows he's a thief. Yes, he is he's God. Yes, he knows he's a thief. He didn't say anything. He just said, I know. If I show this guy love, he's going to change.
Okay, somebody says, if it, it says in the word that Jesus was hated and to follow him, we must be hated. Now ask yourself, who hated Jesus? Not the world. No. It was the church. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Jesus was not hated by the world. Tell me one worldly person that hated Jesus. Tell me one earth worldly person that accused Jesus. None. It was the church. The church. Sure. And remember, I am not saying that you must, you will appease everyone. No, you wouldn't. But let not, don't let anyone have something negative to say about oh, you sure. because of what you did. Yes, sir. Let them have assumptions about you. Let them create stories about you. It's fine. Yes, sir. But let your hands always be clean. Amen. Some of you are not getting jobs, not because God didn't send you a job. You don't have a pleasant spirit. So even when you go to the job interview, you are pretending to be nice that those people can't even feel the connection to give you a job. You imagine, you don't live peaceably with people. You're not kind to people. Somebody says, I need a breakthrough. I try texting you. I don't, I don't have a what's up or what's down or what's in, what's out. I don't have anything like that. So you definitely don't have my number. So you think about it. When Jesus was going to the cross, the anointing was not enough to carry the cross. <laughs> ah. Wow. Now, some of you didn't hear me. When the Lord Jesus was going to the cross, the anointing was not enough to carry the cross. The Holy Spirit was not enough. A man called Simon had to come and help Jesus carry yes, the cross. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. In your most difficult time, you will need men to help you carry. <laughs> you will need men to help you carry the cross. The Holy Spirit won't do it. Hi. <laughs> the cross is for men. That's why the Bible says, "Carry your cross. your cross." It didn't say God will help you carry the cross. Hallelujah. Carry your cross. So when the cross becomes unbearable, mm. but you have messed up with everybody in the name of God, which God actually doesn't advise you to do. Yes, sir. Jesus needed help. <laughs> the Lord Jesus needed help to carry the cross. Man of God, isn't that crazy? It's deep. It's deep. Can you read it? Uh, Simon, the guy who carried the cross. Read it for me. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Um, Matthew 37 verse 32 Matthew 27 32 listen to this and as they came out mm -hmm. they found a man of Cyrene mm -hmm. Simon by name mm -hmm. him they compelled to bear his cross mm -hmm. and that's the first. you imagine they compelled him mm -hmm. and Simon carried Jesus' cross not an angel yes sir an angel came to comfort Jesus. An angel came to comfort to, to strengthen Jesus. Mm -hmm. But to carry the cross a man had to I don't need a man. I just need God. Hey, it is not the complete truth. Every blessing God has ever brought on earth, every deliverance God has ever brought to man, every blessing a man has ever received on earth and will ever receive on earth will be because of another man. Amen. So your relationship with man has to be of great importance just as your relationship with God. Yes, sir. Obviously, your relationship with God is above because you have to give God what is God's and give man what is man's. Yes, sir. But that doesn't mean that you ignore one or you mishandle one yes, sir. because you have to separate how you give this to honor. Mm. But nevertheless, they both need honor. Yes, and do you know what honor means in Hebrew? <laughs> do you know what honor means in, in Greek? Worship. Wow. That is the definition of honor. Wow. Honor actually is worship. worship. 
So the Pharisees came to Jesus and said, should we worship Caesar? Because you have to remember, Caesar to the Romans was like God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Should we pay taxes to Caesar? Because we are supposed to pay tithe in the church. Mm. So it was a trap. Because if he says, don't pay tithes to, don't pay your taxes, then they can use Caesar to get him. Yes, sir. But if he says, give only to Caesar, then they can say, you see, he doesn't believe in the law of tithing. <laughs> then Jesus said, no, no, no. Actually, you know what? Mm. Give God what is God's. Give Caesar what is Caesar's. Yes, yes. Notice Jesus did not say, don't give Caesar anything. Give everything to man. This is why some people who see a man come and kneel before you, they'll say he's worshipping a man. No. It's called honor that yes, is sir. due a man. Yes, sir. Anyone who thinks another man kneeling before a man means worship that is given to God is crazy. Yes, sir. I refuse for people to kneel before me because I know that many are still babies in the spirit. They mm. don't understand what it means. Yes, sir. They will think the person has over glorified me. Yes, but that's sir. not actually the case. Yes, sir. In my culture, children never greeted parents. Even looking at them in the eyes. Yes, when your elders spoke, you looked down. True. When you greeted them, you went on your knees. Yes. You had to hold one hand like this. True. There's a way you had to do things. Why? Because it's honor to the elders. Mm. We were not allowed to call our elders by their name. Mm. That's true. There was a title you have to put before you mention their name. Yes, like in my culture, if I'm about to call my older brother Christian, I didn't say Christian. Mm. I would say, yeah, Christian, meaning my elder brother Christian. Mm. I can't just say Christian, it's disrespectful. Yes, I have to put Yaya in front before I mention their name. I can't call my father and mother by their name. I have to call them by their title because yes, it sir. reminds me of my place. Yes, sir. You meet your pastor, you say, oh, John, ah. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Prophet Jaquan says that it is in the scriptures, bow before the gray-headed. It's there. Mm. So many of you, I'm sorry to break your hearts, but you're not fighting demons. You messed around with the people around you. Mm. You crushed so many hearts. In the name of God, you abused others, thinking you're doing God a favor like so. But in your time of need, you're praying God is not answering. No, he's answering you, but he needs a man to reach out to you. But you messed up with every man. That even if God was to bring somebody from a cross, the men you offended are the ones that are going to talk that person out of helping you. That's, deep. <laughs> That's why the Bible tells you a good name is better than what? Mm. Silver and gold. Because if you mess up your name, even God can't help you. Mm. Let me tell you a secret. Mm. <laughs> Let me tell you a secret. Listen to this. This will help you. Satan knows and understands he can't touch me spiritually. Mm -hmm. Let me speak about myself. Yes, Satan knows he can't do witchcraft to me. Satan knows he cannot curse me. Satan knows he cannot touch me. I am beyond his jurisdiction because I'm in the hands of the Lord Jesus. Yes, and Jesus said, those who my father put in my hands, nobody can snatch them. So the only way Satan can mess me up is to try to destroy my name. Mm, mm, mm. Because divine, the, the, the divine nature of God cannot protect a name. <laughs> That's deep. <laughs> So the only attack will be to tarnish your name. But you see, if you have favor with God and with man because of what you have done, it doesn't matter even if you make a mistake because everyone can repent from a mistake. Yes, I am sure I've messed up. Mm. I'm sure I've made mistakes. I'm sure there are things I didn't get right. Mm. I'm sure of it because everyone is still growing. Yes, sir. I can't say I'm perfect. No, there are things I don't know. Yes, sir. There are things I definitely know and there are things I don't know. And there are things I'm misunderstood in. And that is all fine. Mm. But if I have favor with God and I have favor with man, even if somebody says, ah, prophet is a wizard, ah, prophet is that, he has done this, he has done the people I have done good to, the testimonies will always speak yes, for who I am. 100%. When Jesus was accused of a wizard and this and they wanted to stone him, what did Jesus say? Of which good work do you stone me? 
His work spoke to him about him. Yes, sir. Okay, you can say I'm all these things. You can say I have a devil with me. They said Jesus has a demon. Yes. They even said that about John the Baptist. Yes, sir. He has a demon inside of him. Well, okay. For which good work do you stone me? Listen to this. And Jesus went about doing good. Can you find that for me? Yes, sir. Listen to this scripture. Acts chapter 10, verse 38. It mm -hmm. reads, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. Notice, God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. With the Holy Ghost and with power. With the Holy Spirit and power. Who went about doing good. Uh -huh. And healing all that were oppressed. Of wait, 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 wait. Notice this. Jesus was anointed. Yes, sir. With the Holy Spirit yes, sir. and with power. Yes, sir. And he went about doing good. And mm. notice there's an end. Yes, sir. Healing and delivering people. Mm. Notice the first sign that you have been anointed by God is doing good to people. Mm. Not preaching the gospel. Because how can you preach what you don't reveal? How you don't doesn't reflect for me. <laughs> so Jesus was known for his kindness, for his goodness. Wow. And then healing and delivering people. That's why you see children love Jesus. Mm. Publicans love Jesus. Mm. Prostitutes loved Jesus. All these people love Jesus because there is a way he related to people that brought people to repentance. God anointed Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit and power. The first thing wasn't he would cast out demons. Mm. The first thing was he went about doing good. Mm. Yes, sir. The first time Jesus met Peter, he did him good. Yes, sir. Peter was struggling. He couldn't catch any fish. Mm. Jesus gave him fish. Wow. Then Peter confessed and says, Ah, for what do you want with me? I must sin. I said, Relax. I will make you fisher of men. Notice, Jesus made Peter to favor him because of the blessing. Yes, sir. He did him good first. Yes, sir. Then Peter realized, Ah, no, I need to follow him. That's yes, why the Bible says this The goodness of God brings yes, men to repentance. Yes, sir. The goodness. Yes, sir. Do good to people. I'll say it again. Do good to people. I'm sorry. You have to please people. <laughs> yes, sir. Whether you like it or not, you have to please people. Yes, sir. The Bible says Jesus learned obedience. Ah. Mm. He learned to please mm. people. Mm. God who never needed to report to anybody. He had to report to somebody. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Honor your father and mother. You are pleasing them. An honorless person can't please anyone. Yes, sir. I mean, you know this, guys. When I go anywhere, anyone who's serving me, I always ask them their name. What's your name? I become personable with them immediately. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So that that person can feel seen. That person can see somebody actually cared enough about me. Yes, sir. Somebody actually looked into my... So by the time they walk away, they serve me with such a big smile. Yes, they already... I didn't even give them tip. I didn't even... Just because of how I related to them. Mm. You can imagine how many people they serve. They were just saying, yeah, do this, do that, do this, do that. Mm. But me, you come to me, I'm like, what's your name? How are you doing today? How's your day going? Okay. Wow. How long have you been doing this for? Show interest in people. Yes, genuine sir. interest in mm. people. Mm. People will open their heart to you. The moment they are, you have infected them with joy, you just bless them. That's true. You just heal them. Maybe they were struggling. Yes, sir. Maybe they were having disputes in the family. But somebody showed them love. Mm. That they smile for a second. In their heart, just because they were happy with you, they just blessed you. Remember, there's a blessing from God and there's a blessing of men. Yes, sir. But the church has taught you, you just need God to bless you. That's a lie. When Isaac wanted to bless his children, it wasn't because God asked him. True. He said, go and cook me my favorite thing, Esau. Then my soul yes, will sir. bless you. Yes, Compel my heart to bless you. Yes, it means until then, the son never compelled him to be blessed. Mm. It was his death that moved him to now give him a clue. Can you do something will make me happy to bless you? Aye. Yet the legacy has to continue. Yes, sir. He's helping his his son, his mm, firstborn. Mm. Do something to please me so that my soul can bless. Make my heart want to bless you. Yes, sir. So if somebody sits there and their heart is moved, then you're such a nice guy. They just blessed you. <laughs> you're teaching good. It's amazing. Amazing. You, your brother is not happy with you. Your sister is not happy with you. Your uncles are not happy with you. Your neighbor is not happy with you. You are snob to everybody. You mistreat people in the name of God. Foolishness. 
Give human beings what is due to them. Many of you, you are not under witchcraft. You are just under the curse of favor. You have misunderstood favor. You don't just need favor from God. Some of you are given favor by man and you ruined the favor. You destroyed it. I was in Zimbabwe with uh, Papa. I was with, in Zimbabwe with Papa. We met the president and, you know, we were doing some business there. And um, I wanted to get my dreads done. I had not twisted my dreadlocks. As you can see, it looks kind of neat, kind of dry. I need to oil it, but I had not done my dreads for some time. I think almost two months. So we called for uh, um, for somebody to come and do dreads. And this young man came. And he was like, yeah, I've done this, this, this. So another friend of his came to help. Mm -hmm. Because they were doing my hair. They, twist. they did such a good job. And other guys were also there doing it, whatever. He had one more person helping him. So all this guy wanted to be paid was $50. Listen, Africa is deep. $50 to do my hair and to do my father's hair, $50. Then my dad said, no, don't worry. I'm gonna give each of you $200. But the one who came first said, oh, all these other guys, I am the one who mentored them. So the money that my father took $400 and gave to him, and when they left, the other guy came and said, Prophet, the guy said it was his gig. Wow. And took all the money, didn't even give me a dime. Wow. And the guy, when we were talking, I, I, we didn't like me and Papa, our spirit didn't like him. He was doing a good job, but our spirit didn't connect with him. And the guy wanted to do music, he wanted to do this, he wanted to do that. He was asking me questions, but my spirit didn't really like him. When he did that, I'm like, now you listen. Every time Papa is in Zimbabwe, he was supposed to be calling you. But he called you and you showed greed. We will never call you. You just ruined favor. Yet you're saying, man, I've been, you know, you don't understand how this will go so far and this and this. God opens a door, but your greed ruined the favor. Mm. You see, be good to people because you don't know who tomorrow you will need. Amen. You see, to be a people pleaser, it means that you do whatever the people want you to do. Yes, sir. Somebody who gives honor doesn't give what a person wants. He gives what they need. Yes, sir. So for you to please man doesn't mean compromise. Actually lift their status to what God has called them to be. Love them as you would love yourself. Yes, sir. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Love your neighbor as you would love yourself. Many of you don't love yourself. That's why you destroy favor with everyone. Mm. Honor is due. Do you know what something being due means? If you say your bills are due, what does it mean? Hey, your past time, this is something that needs to be given. Yes, sir. So when you give somebody honor that is due them, when you give God what is due them, it means something you owe them. Yes, sir. So each and every one of us owe somebody honor. Mm. We owe them. That's deep. That's deep. You don't honor people because they are good. Yes, sir. You honor them because you have a debt to mm. give somebody honor. Wow. So in finishing... In finishing, take account of all your relationships.
Take account of all your relationships and ask yourself truthfully, genuinely, have I dishonored people? There's a son of mine who is in New York. This is like four years ago, five years ago. One of his friends was making some waves online. And I told him, your friend has the potential to go very far, but he doesn't understand honor. He needs a mentor or else he's gonna crash. I want to help him. So I said, okay, Papa, I'll talk to him, but ah, Papa, he feels, I said, no, just, I want to help him. There are things he needs to learn that will take him very, very, very far. So when he told him that, he said, uh, Prophet wants to meet with you. He wants to help you and guide you. The guy said, show him these videos. <laughs> He was at a parking lot with his church members and he did this and they were all shaking and falling down. I told him, tell him never to contact me again. You're foolish. Two years later, he's begging my son to see me. To my son, he will never see me again. I gave him an opportunity. He thought now everything he was doing is non-existent. I'm not saying I was going to make his ministry better. I was going to give him wisdom. I was going to maintain what God gave him. Mm. Now my guy is uh, painting houses. He spoke carelessly. He treated people weird. He was the holiest guy. Mm -hmm. Now, you're asking for something. My heart is closed. I'm not compelled anymore. That's it. And you know I love people. Exactly. If I close my heart, I've closed my heart. That's true. Take account. Take account. Take account. of all the relationships around you. The Bible says it like this. It says this, if a man uh, pleases God, yes. can you find it for me? Yes, Listen sir. to this. Ah, Nkotanya, I love your dictionary. Me, I have scripture in my spirit. <laughs> ah, you, you are a dictionary, you are deep. <laughs> L Listen to this, I'll finish with this and then I'll let you guys go. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. It says, um, it's Proverbs 15. Mm -hmm. Let me just get there. Mm -hmm. It says, if a man's ways please the Lord. If a man's yes. way please God. Notice, your way. Yes, sir. Meaning you can do things that please God. Yes, sir. No, you don't please God by your prayer. Yes, sir. You please God by your ways. Your ways. Uh -huh. It says, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. God will make your enemies favor you. Yes, they will be at peace with you. Yes, sir. I was sharing with the, with the prophet Tanya. I was telling him this. David loved God, but mm. he was not at peace with people around him. Mm. He killed his own friend to get his wife. Yes, sir. So even though God wanted his temple to be built, when he said, Lord, I want to build your house, God said, ah, your, house, your hands are full of blood. Mm. I have chosen your son Solomon to build my house. Solomon is the one that will build my house, not you. But because of this desire, I will make your throne stay before me forever. But you will not build my house. Hmm. Solomon had peace with all his neighbors. Yes, sir. It is only at the reign of Sol Solomon that the kingdom was not at war within itself. Mm -hmm. And even other nations never fought them. Yes, sir. Nobody had a reason to fight him. Yes, sir. Not because he had a strong military power. Everyone was bringing tribute to him. Everyone was at peace with him. And this is the man that God chose to build this temple. Yes, sir. 
Because you cannot build a house of God that all nations will come to if you're not at peace with people. Yes, sir. Already you have a bad vibe. Mm. God can't endorse a person who doesn't love people to build a house that will house everyone. That's deep. It's very deep. God chose Solomon because of his ability to be at peace with everyone. Mm. You and me desire to go to Israel to see the temple that Solomon raised. Yes, sir. To cry at the wailing wall mm. because of a man that pleased God. Every nation of the world wants to go where, where Solomon prayed. Lord, anyone that will cry towards this place, anyone that will look towards this, hear from heaven. He was at peace with everyone. And his house is still standing. Mm. Some of you pastors, you speak carelessly. You don't think about what you're saying. You undermine people thinking that you will never make a mistake. You see, here's the wisdom of God, guys. You see, you can escape embarrassment. <laughs> you can escape embarrassment. You know one thing I love about, about myself? Is that I realized I can make mistakes. So I just live regular. Even though, don't get me wrong. I am very highly, highly spiritual. I walk with God. Uh, I walk with God. The Lord Jesus is with me. I'm graced by God. I know that. I've known that all my life. And I do my best to walk uprightly before God. But I know I'm not beyond the error. My own father's corrected me. My bishop has corrected me. I make mistakes. So I make sure even the people around me, when I correct them in errors, I correct them from a place of understanding weakness mm. is not wickedness. So the day that I may make a mistake, not because I want to, mm. they will show me mercy because I showed them mercy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Only God can judge me. That's not true. Men can judge you. <laughs> Somebody said, um, can, um, uh, is it your choice to open your heart or to close it? 100% your choice. <laughs> God can't force anyone to do anything. He will try to compel you. But he can't force you. If somebody grieved you so bad, even God will be unfair mm. to send you mm. to go and help them. <laughs> God always gives back what is due people. Yes, sir. You do something bad, God will make sure what you did, you will pay for it. Mm. No one is obligated to do anything. Mm. God has what is called righteous judgment. Mm. <laughs> you need to take account of everyone that is around you. Sometimes I get correction from my own son. Tell me, Papa, you're, you've been working too much. You haven't been giving me time. Papa, you promised me we we're going to do this and we didn't get to do it. Those are corrections. I'm like, ah, oh, my son, I'm sorry. I've been working too much. But that's not an excuse for him. I have to feel, fulfill my end. So I'm growing. Yes, sir. What about parents who dishonor their children? A child still has to honor. The Bible did not say honor your father and mother when they are good. <laughs> say just honor them. Just honor. That's all God is asking us to. 
He's not asking us to do magic tricks. Just mm -hmm. honor. So, I hope my counsel has been of help. Yes, sir. And I pray that you will prosper. <clears throat> that you will increase. Amen. Material blessing, God will use men to give it to you. Amen. Not angels. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> I'll say that again. People don't like to work with unpleasant people. Mm. People don't like to work with problematic people. Mm. People don't like that. They mm. peace. Anyhow, I love you. May the Lord Jesus bless you. I hope this video was educational for you. Mm -hmm. It will make you to walk better. Amen. Be kind to people. Amen. Even your worst enemies, the Bible says, give them a glass of water. Benjamin Jones Global, thank you. Thank you for the prayer. I love you with the love of the Lord Jesus Christ. May he keep you and watch over you. May he give you the grace to mend relationships around you. Amen. That you may be all that he has desired for you to be. In Jesus' name, amen.